everybody, Mike here at MH Tutorials. Welcome back. Well, guys, um, a few days ago I did a post on Facebook where I posted a 3D model of a light bulb, and I got the question, "Can you do a tutorial on how to do that?" So that's what we're going to do today. All right. Now we're going to start off by loading a reference image. So we're going to go to our panel view. And I'm going to go to View, Image Plane, Import Image. And I found this image right here. Now, don't worry, we're not going to model a yellow light bulb. The reason why I chose that image is because it gives us good contrast when we're modeling the bulb shape. So we will be modeling a clear light bulb. Okay. Now we're going to hit R, we're going to scale that up a little bit. And hit W and pull that up. And then we're going to actually create a sphere in our perspective view, pull that out, and give that 40 subdivisions, all right? Then we're going to switch to this view, we're going to bring that up, hit F to zoom in, and then we're going to grab our image and bring that in until that's centered, okay? Select that guy, hit R, and kind of scale it and move it until we are close to the shape here. We're going to hit our X-ray button. And as you can see, the big portion of this is actually pretty nice, right? Then we're going to right click, we're going to go to face, and we're going to drag, select, and pull up the section or sections that are not aligned and hit delete like that, okay? Cool. Then, let's go to our perspective view, right click, go to edge, double click on that edge and go to edit mesh and under edge select extrude, go back here, okay, we're going to hit W, we're going to pull that down until we have roughly the same distance, then we're going to hit G to repeat that. W to move that down again, G to repeat, W to move down, and just continue that process until we are well beyond the end or the bottom of our light bulb, and maybe even one more. All right, then we're going to hit Q on our keyboard. We're going to zoom in, we're going to right click, go to face, and we're going to drag select these faces, uh, sorry, vertex, drag select these vertices, hit R, and we're going to start to scale them in. Okay, now let's repeat that. It is going to stretch down a bit, but that's fine. We'll correct that later. And just focus on one side of the light bulb, just in case it's not 100% symmetrical. Let's zoom in a little bit so we can see it better. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to go back to the sheet right here, right click edge, double click on that, edit mesh, and extrude, we're going to hit W, we're going to pull that down a bit more, hit G to repeat, W to pull down again, and then right click vertex, Take these two, hit R, bring that one in, and bring that one in as well, and maybe hit W and bring that down just a little bit. And like I said, focus on one end, B 
because a real light bulb is never 100% absolutely symmetrical. So actually our model will be more symmetrical. Okay. We're just going to check the roundness here. So we're going to go right click to object mode. So that's our light bulb. We don't see any, any very clear lines, so it's pretty clean. And if we hit three on our keyboard, there's actually not a lot of difference. Okay, cool. All right, so now that we've got that, we're just gonna move this guy out of the way for a sec. And let's focus on the bottom section. For that, we're gonna take a polygon cylinder. We're gonna pull that up. In our attribute editor, we're going to increase subdivisions to 40, caps to zero, and height, let's do, let's see if we got 10, that's about right. Let's just check our reference here. Yeah, that's about right, okay. Right click at a face, select that top face and delete it. And select the bottom face and delete that as well. All right. We're going to go to this view. We're going to go to object mode. Oops. There we go. We're going to bring that in. Hit F to zoom in. And center that to our middle line. And as you can see, our image is not necessarily exactly in the middle. So we'll just tweak that a bit. We're going to hit R, we're going to bring that in. Let's move this guy some more. And again, we'll be focusing on one side of that. So we're going to bring that up. Hit R, stretch it out just a bit more. And stretch it out. That's pretty close. Okay. Right, cool. Now next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click, we're gonna go to face, and we're gonna drag select this row, skip one row, skip another row, and skip another row until we have these, okay? Edit mesh, go under face to extrude, hit R, and start to bring them out, and then push them down until they're level. Okay, there we go. And then next, we are going to hit E and we're gonna rotate those. Actually, we're not gonna do it that way, sorry. So let's first see what we got here. All right. That guy, we're going to approach that slightly different. We're going to right click, go to edge, double click on that edge, and we're going to take all these edges, the ones that are on the outside of the faces and also the ones inside. So that gives us edge on top, the two outside edges, and the one on the inside, and that all the way down. We should have all of them, yeah, cool. We're gonna go back to this view and now we are going to start to tilt them. And let's see. Yeah, that's all right. Just check that for a sec. Right click object mode, hit three on your keyboard. That's not bad. Hit one again, we'll tweak this a little bit. So we'll go to this view here. Right click vertex, drag select 
all of these and hopefully I got all of them. We're going to bring that in from the top and then we're going to select this bottom row here and we're going to move that out until that is once again fairly straight. There we go. Right click object mode. I'm just going to check our position here. So that is not bad. Now we are going to right click face. Actually, let's do right click edge. I'm going to take the top edge and we're just going to scale that out just to flare it a little bit. Okay. Now, what we can do is right click with object mode and just push this in just a little bit. Hit W and raise that until we are there. And then right click edge, select that edge, edit mesh and other edge, extrude. Hit W and bring that down. And R and bring that in. And once again, don't worry about the symmetry of our model here, at least of our image. Let me put it that way, because we will be dealing with that based on our actual model. We're going to bring that guy in a bit. Take that one and bring that in a bit more. And then from this view, Go to Edit Mesh, Under Edge, Extrude, hit W to just create a little edge here, and then G to repeat, R to scale in until we are very close to having that closed completely and hit W and just push that down a little bit. Maybe a bit more. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. All right, so we got that. We're just gonna check that again. Go to object mode, hit three on your keyboard. Let's see what we got. We're gonna bring in our light bulb. Check it from this view. Okay, has to be aligned from the top as you can see. So what we'll do is we'll set our translate values to zero. And then we'll take this guy and do the same. Hit four for wireframe mode. And let's just see what we got here. Okay, we'll bring him up. Just take our reference image, move that out of the way for a sec. Okay. Not too bad. Just move this for a sec. All right. Just going to tweak this a little bit. Go to edge, drag select that, bring that in. Yeah, it's better. Okay, cool. So now that we got that, let's worry about the interior. And we'll keep the image around for reference, but we don't really need to worry about that. We're just going to move him out of the way. And we're going to create a little internal platform, if you will. So we're going to create a polygon cylinder. Let's give that some height. Let's do 40 subdivisions, zero caps. Right click face, select that face. Edit mesh face, extrude. Hit R, pull that in. And hit W and pull that up until we get that. 
right click object mode set our translate values to zero so it's nice and centered and we're going to pull that up but not all the way we're going to leave some space there and check from our top let's even do that from our perspective view to see how far we need to scale that guy out okay that's coming through our outer wall that is better okay cool okay so now that we got that we are going to get our reference image back for the reason that we need to determine the height of the um, internal section if you will all right okay now that we got that let's create a polygon cube we're going to pull that up let's move that into position so move that up until we are about there hit R to scale it in right click your vertex to select the top hit W to bring that down so that's our initial shape okay and then we need to add edge loops right there so edit mesh uh, actually mesh tools insert edge loop option box let's do multiple and select two and there we go hit Q on your keyboard right click edge select that one hit W and bring that up to about there and select that one and bring that up to right there okay hit F to zoom in right click face select that face all the way around edit mesh face extrude hit R and scale that in that's good and then go back to mesh tools insert edge loop tool option box go to your regular setting add an edge loop push that to the edge but not too close the same here do one here and one right there hit Q on your keyboard go to object mode and hit 3 okay that's not too bad but not good enough now we're gonna go to mesh tools again insert edge loop tool option box go back to 2 insert them hit Q right click face I want these two faces edit mesh face extrude hit R push them out that's cool and then take that guy hit G to repeat W to pull up and let's just check it from this view here that should go to it's a bit hard to see but yeah that's right to there and then edit mesh face extrude again hit our skill that out G to repeat W to pull up okay that's pretty close right click object mode hit three that is much better and now with the whole thing selected we're gonna kind of push that in a little bit to get somewhat more round top like that okay cool select that go to our poly cube set the translate values to zero all right hit w raise that up and let's just 
check that from this view here. That would be about there. And let's see if that connects with our surface or not. As you can see, we need to bring that down a little bit. So right click uh, vertex, drag select that section and bring that down. Okay, cool. Now we're going to deal with the wires, the internal wires, if you will. Create a polygon cylinder, drag that up, and that will need to be very, very thin. Okay. And it's going to be hard to see, but we'll get through this. Okay. So we're going to first make sure that we have enough subdivision. So again, we'll do 40. And we're going to select that guy and we're going to scale it down a lot. Make this a very, very thin. That's pretty close. We're going to bring that down. And it's going to be sitting inside our object pretty much around this angle here. And pretty much that depth as well. Then we're going to go to Mesh Tools, Injured Edge Loop Tool, Option Box. Select your regular setting. And we're going to add one at the point where it's going to bend to the left. Hit Q on your keyboard. Zoom in. Right click Vertex, select the top, hit W, and move that up here. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what's going to go on up there is we need to create a kind of a circle. Okay. So we're going to go to object mode. Let's move that in. Just check that from our top view. That is okay. And now for the tricky part, we need to create a uh, kind of a circle on there. Now, there are a couple of ways we can do this, but what we'll do is, let's see from which angle. Yeah, we'll do that from Hmm. Yeah, we'll do it from this angle. Okay. So we're going to go to Mesh Tools, Injured Edge Loop Tool. Let's add one right there. Actually, this is going to be incredibly small. So what we'll do is just go back a step. We're going to create um, a torus and let's just go to object mode um, okay poly torus cool let's do 40 subdivisions that's good let's bring the section radius down to 0 0.1 and then we are going to select it hit E we're going to rotate that 90 degrees. Then we're going to rotate it again. Minus 90 degrees. And let's scale that down. Hit W and let's position that. Oops, let's position that on top of where we were. So let's see if we can do that from this view. Have to zoom in. Hard to scale down. And like I said, it's going to be very, very small. Okay, so pull it up. Pull it to the left. I think I have to zoom in. Okay. Now we're starting to get to where we need to be. Hit R. Let's give that a bit more body. So it's kind of in line with our other object. Okay. 
Okay, and now we need to open that up. And let me see, let's find the correct angle here. There we go. I'm gonna hit four for wireframe mode. Right click face. And let's take that section and hit the delete. Let's see what we got. Still too big for my taste. So right click object mode, scale it down, hit W, bring that down. And the thing with this is when we're done, we're not even gonna see this, but just to be complete, That's look right. The thing is, I just want to get this more in proportion. So I'm just gonna make this nice and thin. And then right click vertex, select that and bring it up to a guy up here. Let's see how close we are. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so we're gonna right click on object mode. Let's select these two, hit control D to duplicate. Bring that over. Okay, and then we're gonna switch to this view. We're gonna right click, go to vertex, drag select all of that. Move that over to that end. Then drag select that guy. Move that over, hit F to zoom in. E to rotate. All right, that's good. Now let's just check our guy here. And again, it's hard to see in this example, but no worries, we'll get there. And actually at this point, we can take a guy and just get rid of it. Okay, so now that we've got that, I'm gonna select this and this, go to Mesh, Combine, hit Control D, W, Modify center pivot, W to move that over. And we're gonna scale this down. So hit R, scale that down and push that up. And we want the top section here. So I'll just push that in a little bit. Go to vertex, this top section, we want that to be up here, maybe a bit lower, okay. Right click object mode, select the whole thing. Control D to duplicate. Move that over there. Right click vertex. And try to find symmetry. And now we'll just select that, hit E. Actually, that's a bit too much. We just want these. All right. Okay, so now that we got that, we need to create, uh, create the um, I think it's called a spring, not sure, okay. So we're gonna go to create, polygon primitives, and helix. Let's drag that out, okay. We're gonna go to object mode, there we go. First we're gonna rotate it. And make 
make sure we're at 90 degrees. Let's get it in between our wrong view. Let's get it in between where we need to be. And as you can see, it's very, very large. Okay, so we're going to bring that down. Hit W. So that's kind of where we need to be. Okay. We're still going to scale it down quite a bit more. And then we're going to tweak it. So the number of coils, they need to go up dramatically. And we're going to stretch out, not the width, hang on, the height. There we go. Okay. So let's bring that out. We're going to increase the number of coils to, let's do 40. We are going to increase the height a bit more. Let's do 120, 115. That looks pretty close. OK, perfect. All right. Now, let's see what else. Radius 0 0.2. That's good. That's actually very nice. OK. OK, so now we're going to right click. We're going to go to Vertex, and we're going to tweak this a bit. We're going to hit B for our soft select. So let's take these. Hold down your B and your left mouse button, and we're going to bring this in. And let's just start to make sure that this thing is not as straight as it is and we kind of want to create that bend okay so this area we are going to bring down and just kind of make sure that it's a little bit off if you will yeah it's not bad okay cool so now we get to the tricky part. First, let's get our spring in place. Check it from our top view. Let's move that in between here. There we go. That should be right. Cool. OK, let's start with applying some materials. OK, now we want these four are so small that I'll just have to do it that way. Okay. Right click, assign new material, MIA underscore X, and go to presets, select Chrome, and replace because we want them to be reflected. Okay. We're going to select our spring, right click, assign new material. Select a Lambert. And for a Lambert, we're going to go with an orange red type of deal. Make that fairly bright. And then go to special effects. And the glow intensity will do one. That should be good. And we can tweak that later. Then we're going to select that object. Right click, assign a material, MIA underscore X. That's going to be solid glass. So there we go. Replace. For this section down here, this internal piece, and this seems to be disappeared, but it's not. You can see that it's. There you go. OK. OK. Right click, assign new material, the same MIA material. Go to presets, copper, replace, and kind of bring that down to give it a somewhat darker color. We're going to select this element. Right click, assign new material, the same material, preset, chrome, replace. And now for the section down here, right click face and I'll just do that from this view here we're going to select these two face rows 
hit B to get rid of our soft select. Right click assign new material. Let's do a Fong E. And let's make that black. There we go. And now let's get the rest of our light in place. There we go. So let's set our translate values back to zero. Let's bring it up. Check it from our perspective view. Looks like we need to bring it down just a little bit. Okay. Cool. Right click, assign new material. MIA underscore X. And we're going to go to presets and we're going to select glass thin and hit replace. Okay. Now we're just going to select our entire light. Hit control G to group it and call this light bulb. Okay. Now for this thing to look fairly decent, it's very, very important how to set up your scene when you're rendering it. Okay. So we're going to start off by creating a backdrop for it, if you will. For that, we'll take a polygon cylinder. We're going to drag that out, pull that up. We're going to increase our subdivisions to 60 and caps to zero. Let's make sure that this guy is centered. There we go. We're going to hit R and we're going to select this and pull it out big time. Right click face, select the top face and hit delete. And now let's just make sure that the bottom is acting as our floor. So go to object mode, hit W and pull it up. And we're just going to zoom in a bit. And you want your light bulb to almost hit the floor. All right. So that's what we're going to use for our, uh, yeah, for our um, stage, if you will. Now, what we can do is select a couple of these faces and just get rid of them. So we've got a good angle of approach. We're going to give this some color. Object mode, right click, assign new material. Let's go with a Fong E and change that to white. Okay. Maybe get rid of a few more faces. There we go. Okay. Now, um, lighting is extremely important when rendering something like this because I'll just turn off my grid here because you want this to look realistic. Okay. So I'm going to use uh, image based lighting in addition to regular lighting. So I'm going to go to my render settings and I'm going to go to metal ray, indirect lighting, set up global illumination, final gathering, caustics, make sure that's selected in your quality tab, go to ray tracing, increase your values, pretty much double them, eight, eight and 12, six, and I'll do a bit more here, three and three. Uh, let's see my common tab. I'm going to do HD 1080 for the size. And I'm going to set up image based lighting. Okay. I'm going to go into my folder options and I'm going to look for my HDRI images. And, um, yeah, let's, let's do, I don't know. Let's do that one. 
but it just depends on what your preference is. So I just took this uh, sky here, okay? Now, in addition, I'm gonna set up a light source. So I'll create lights, point light, pull that up, hit seven on your keyboard. So you can see what your light is doing. And you can see that it's kind of reacting to your light. And I want this wire, if you will, to kind of be visible, okay? So I'm just gonna hit Control D to duplicate that. But I don't necessarily want to have two light sources visible, which is gonna be tricky. So there's a possibility that this is gonna be fairly dark but we'll just give that a try. Don't get your sky into the shot. It will be reflecting on the bottom here. So I'm just gonna set up this right here. Hit four for wireframe mode so I can see what's on my shot. Okay. Let's give this a try. Um, not quite sure if it's gonna be the final render yet or not, but uh, okay. Just move this light up a little bit so it's out of our scene. Um, I'm gonna hit pause, I'm gonna hit the render button and I'll see you guys in a sec. Well guys, like I said, um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep that render. This one was way too light, uh, which is a bit weird because this scene is pretty much black, right? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to change the material on this one, assign a material Fong E, and instead of white, we're gonna do black, okay? Let's get back into our shot. Hit four for wireframe mode, yeah, it's, I'll go back one step here, and I'll tilt it a little bit up so you can see the reflection. You should be able to see the reflection right here. Light-wise, not too bad, um, I'll, Take my light source and kind of move that up. All right, let's check that again. Yeah, we'll do this. Okay. All right, gonna pause the video again. Oh yeah, before I do that, one more thing. Um, on my light bulb itself, the default setting for a glass thin has a kind of a blue color to it. So we're just gonna tweak that. So I'm gonna go to my material. And if I scroll down, you can see in our sample that it's fairly blue and that's because of this guy right here. So we're gonna select that and we're gonna do white or maybe yellow, but that in a very, very, very soft yellow. So very close to white just so there's some distinction, okay? All right, I'm gonna pause the video again. I'm gonna hit render, see you guys in a sec. All right, guys, here we go. This is our uh, final render. Um, yeah, uh, it turned out okay, I think. So uh, let me know if you've got any questions. And uh, thank you guys for watching, as always. And see you guys next time. Bye.